Hello, this is my second time trying to film this because I wanted to make sure that certain things got said and not missed. Uh, I, this is a review, or this is my review of, uh, it's going to be more of an overview than, rather than a full review of um, Art to Bear's Black and White, and I'm going to look at Chrono Mechanics a little bit too. So, um, hey, and Chrono Mechanics was originally in Black and White. Check that out. So, this is the book. Uh, these, these, both of these books are being redone, and um, what's nice, which, what I like that Art is doing is, while there are some pages which I'll show you that are going to be the same between the old and the new, uh, I'll show it to you in the black and white rather than Chrono Mechanics because we're not. I'm not going to grab the camera and point at my my uh, computer screen. Um, he is in the black and or he's shown that in the black and white he's really redrawing a good portion of the book and touching up other portions of the book that if a panel or maybe a page gets reused in its entirety it's it's being fixed it's it's being worked up things are being touched up updated and that's just the inks then there's the coloring on top of that so for both of these books uh, the old compared to the new the coloring is uh, using a, a, a lot more gradation that's available now rather than what was available in the 90s when these first came out so we'll set these aside for now so those will go away and uh, this is these are the old ones and then here are the new 48 page black and whites this is the same book two different colors covers excuse me I think this is the Greg Caputo and of course they signed them what's really cool about these signatures when I glance at them um, Pamela's mark here uh, sometimes it looks to me like a, um, a kanji, <laughs> which is pretty neat since this uh, this black and white story apparently takes place in Japan. So we'll move into that a bit. Uh, let's see. Just for, I'm going to try and do a bit of comparison. This book first opens. You get the yin yang, and uh, I you know it, it can be just a simple wordplay gimmick to use the yin yang with black and white, but but I think to uh, art may have been using a little bit more than that, playing a little bit, little bit more with it. Now, the yin and yang, uh, I, usually the yin, which is, uh, re, which uh, resembles, or sorry, is used to refer to several things in, uh, the, the yin is the feminine, and of course, Whitney here, our white character, you know, I forget his first name, but his last name is Black. Uh, Whitney is the white, and the masculine usually is, in this case, wearing black. So that, I think that goes with the dots here. I actually don't remember the function of the dots. Most people just sort of as a slang say, oh, it, it, it resembles the one is always still involved in the other. I think there was more to it than that. I just don't recall it off the top of my head. So uh, what's interesting, though, is uh, Whitney is a very chaotic character. She's going through a lot, um, which I'll get into. But in other systems, I didn't find this in the yin-yang. Uh, in other systems, the dark darkness usually goes with the abyss or chaos that other things come out to overcome. So it, it, that primordial chaos in, in the darkness is in a lot of different systems. I don't know that that's deliberately linked uh, here in that way, but she is a chaotic character. It's quite understandable. Um, she's out for revenge. And that, that's a theme I really appreciate in this book. In this book, Now, this book encapsulates the first two original issues, but uh, the difference between justice and vengeance is, is a theme that comes up by the end of the book because she is out for vengeance, and part of her growth as a character is having to, to face uh, consequences for acting uh, rashly or impatiently and to see that she should be looking for justice rather than for vengeance. That's a, a good... I like that theme in the book. I forgot to mention that when I first recorded this. So, um, flipping through here, you see this page as it's laid out, and uh, we're introduced to... I'm going to look at the old book first. We're introduced to a brewery, which is owned, if I'm not mistaken, in this version it's the Samsung family, and in this newer one, it probably for just to avoid a lawsuit, it's the Sung family. Now, I don't remember if in Japanese culture, Sam in front of a name means anything. Uh, sort of, they have those appended, uh, 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 what do you call them at the end? Uh, they're not diacritical, that's something else. Anyway, at the end of a name, you'll, you'll throw on a, a honor, an honorific. I don't know if, if Sam on the front, on the, as a prefix, means anything. So, anyway, this is the uh, Sung Brewery and our uncle here, what was his name? This is Whitney. His name is Black. Forget his first name. Uh, Black is uh, 
works like a secret agent sort of, but he's a bit rogue on his own. And his Q character, if he were if he were 007 and he's not, but if he were, his Q character is an older gentleman who's been a mentor named Gray. And this uncle, um, oh, I can't, you know what, I cannot remember his name, so we'll just call him Uncle Sung. And that's good enough. So we see in this double page spread, there is a, a large mech coming through the wall of the brewery. Uh, the men who work at the brewery are, are set to defend the place, which is what we see here. And then we'll get back to this page in a moment. That's been redone in here. So on the first page, why do pages do this to me when I'm recording? There we go. So you see that uh, this has been reformatted. The factory looks quite different. Flip back. And try to align that. So we still have the factory opening. This has been redrawn. Our here's our uncle character. Things things have been redone. Um, for the better, you, you know, they work both ways. You can read either book and they're, and they're just fine. And we get this whole bursting in scene is still done within three pages over here. So there's that. But interestingly, as we flip, this does happen a few times. We get hey, a page cooperated. You can see where this, this page over here, carefully, Except to that for you. You can see where this page was very much reused, although it was also changed. The face in here is very different. The details on the on the mech, um, the mechas, the robots coming in. Uh, here's the smooth surface. Here he's got a little bit of cracks and whatnot. So it looks like things were redrawn, even if they're extremely close, or maybe he took the original and updated it a bit. I don't know, but these these look very close to to uh, exact duplicates. Um, with just maybe a panel changed, but the details in the detail work it's changed. In fact, the, the head here is that different, or is that just no, it's not different. I'm sorry, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's the same design. Okay, um, this panel was added in, of course. So, art did a lot of work, and I'm not going to um, shortchange any of the, the pages that are overly similar or even you know, pure repetition because. He, he changed so many pages. Now, in the older version of, of the story, there are certain li uh, scenes that involve our villain. Here's our villain. His name is uh, Chang. He goes by JC. Uh, Chang here, there are a few scenes in the older one that, it, pardon me for stumbling my, my sentences, where that focus a little bit more on, on Chang. Those are shortened up, tightened up, or omitted in the newer one, leaving more space to focus on the character development for Whitney and uh, what she's going through in terms of, of uh, what's happening to her. So what is happening to her? Whitney is the heiress to the brewery, and her uncle is running the brewery, but in the ground underneath the brewery is a um, mineral of some sort that Cheng wants for his own for his own purposes. So he has essentially kidnapped Whitney, put her into a uh, some sort of mental health care facility so that there we go, so that she can and notice these two pages are quite similar um, I'll get to these in a moment uh, so that she can be brainwashed and fall in line with what he wants uh, for her to do and you see this page has been redone the sign is different so, uh, the man reading the newspapers changed these panels here with gray that's the, the, the Q in 007 terms. There's an extra panel over here that's added that's not over here. Or is it? Oh, I'm sorry, it is there. I'm trying to look in my viewfinder and I missed a detail here. I can't quite see it. In fact, if this is out of focus, I apologize because I can't tell. Um, but you can see how gray here has been redrawn. Uh, and this is gray, gray doing a little bit of reconnaissance, discovering what Cheng's men are doing underneath the brewery that they've broken in, that they've, uh, well, it was, when you're... We, when you're busting in with large robots, it's quite the hostile takeover. Let's we'll put it that way. Uh, so what happens now, the history between Black and Whitney, White, isn't exactly made clear, but he's there to bust her out. They do have a prior history together. Uh, he gets her out of the asylum, much <laughs> even though she, she fights him. She thwarts his efforts to do things in a good, clean way. Uh, that's, that's her chaoticness. But he, and then uh, Gray, as 
as the mentor character, this becomes uh, kind of important. Oh, I don't have a picture of Gray. Well, here's Mr. Gray. Uh, Gray as a mentor character, every, he, he's got the moral, you could call it the moral high ground on in terms of how things are to be done correctly in terms of uh, espionage. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That makes, if she's the id, he's the superego. And black is the ego, trying to rein in the id according to the morality of the superego. This is a really great type of trinity archetype that that um, Art is using here. And so, Art Tiber, it's Tiber, not Thiebert. <laughs> so, no, no I, I always got that. Um, Tiber did a really good job. I'd love to say he intended that, but if he didn't, it's really cool that it, that you can find it balanced in there anyway as a type of trinity archetype. And I'm using trinity just because there are three figures. I don't mean to make reference to the Christian trinity at all. So, um, these, well, let's see. We have some dealings back and forth, and they do give Whitney her own suit, and it's this, now, this is where the story breaks, and then now we're into what was actually issue two right there. Um, but they do give Whitney her own suit to help her out, and that's coming up real soon. And the first thing she does, of course, and I am skipping bits of the story, there's, there's, there are far more interesting things in here. Uh, one of the first things she does when the suit is turned on, and there are some there are some differences in this whole pl part of the plot from the original. Uh, it, it has changed a little bit. Um, when the su suit is first turned on, what's the first thing she does? She, she decks her partner. Now, these suits are pretty cool. In this version, um, they are linked in a way that they can communicate telepathically. That's one of the things the suit, suit enables. But it also enables them to work together, um, thus the yin-yang coming together, such that, uh, and I, I forget exactly what is slightly changed from the original, but it doesn't matter. This is quite enjoyable on its own. Um, they can feel what each other are going to do and share, share thoughts so they can anticipate movement. In fact, when she punches him, uh, he can feel it coming that is, he can feel her moving in on him, but he can't get out of the way fast enough. Uh, he couldn't react. It was sort of funny. So, in the end here, uh, one of the things we're given before to be continued is that uh, she... And, and he's got a thing for her, it's quite obvious. Uh, but, but Gray is commenting that she is the yin to his yang, which is sort of funny that the colors are reversed. No. So, I expect more good work coming up out of art to bear, because... There was a third issue, and in fact there was a separate series that started, I don't know if it went to an issue two, I believe it did, but issue two never got published or something like that. If you really want to know, ask ask the creator. I, I don't, never found out. I could not find the issue two of the second series. Uh, so there's that. These were sold with a uh, ash can. You'll notice the, co the cover art for the ash can is an update to the cover art from the original number one. But there was an original ash can, which Art was generous enough to go and sell. You know, he dug up, found a bunch of copies, and sold those. So, and of course, they're signed too. See, everybody's on there. Um, if you didn't get this, but you did get this one, the only thing you're missing would be some pinup art in the back. There we go. See, like that. There's also a centerfold pinup. Like, I'll just hold it that way there. Uh, but if you got this one. The the uh, the story is the same in both of them, but this one has more pages to it. It's it reuses the same pages, but it has more pages of story th throughout. It's not like they're all on the, the back end, so, so that's pretty cool. Um, I I don't believe we're being shortchanged at all with the changes that are being made, or by some pages that weren't changed as much as others. There, it, it's blatantly apparent that there was a lot of work put into updating these. That will bring us to... Oh, and I like the story. I really like the use of the archetype in there with the uh, uh, id ego and super ego. So that brings us, us to Chrono Mechanics, which is also being updated. And I think it's... As I record this, it's still an in in-demand. Um, so the original was in black and white, and then that came out in, you know, in separate issues. Uh, if these look really thick, it's because when these came out by from Alias, 
they came out with a flip book of a prior book on the back on the back half. So they were they were 48 pages, but it was two books. This book came out before, so it goes on the back of the new book, like so. And I'm going to show you a little bit of the art from this one. Uh, I think this one you can compare this to what's on the uh, double. It's a double page spread that's about uh, showing on the uh, my computer screens up there. Uh, the campaign and this one is too. The new stuff, or at least what's shown on the campaign, uh, uses a lot more gradient in the colors. Uh, it it is just a different art style, you could say, in the coloring. Both of these work. They're both perfectly good. Um, they're the if you know the story already from looking at the promos. Uh, this is Doug, and he's the new guy on the on the team. Um, I'll let you go look at the campaign to find more of the story there. But these these guys work on the mechanisms of time that are in the background of the universe. So time really is a machine, and they get pulled out of their different uh, point their different uh, points in time. So they're all from different eras, uh, in order to do do a job to keep time running, uh, and then hilarity ensues from there. So art has recolored a lot of this. You can find that on the campaign. I just want to show you a little bit of the old. Um, and it is worth worth the read. I don't want to. Is this a good? Yeah, this page is on the campaign as well. So I don't want to overspoil that. As far as uh, showing pages that aren't on the campaign, not not too many of those. And there you go. Uh, I'd recommend this one. And when the next black and white comes out, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for listening through all this. Uh, have a good day.